so good morning everyone i'll be beginning with my presentation on uh, subretinal injection of uh, stem cell derived rp cells a six month safety and integration in a rat model my aios number is as mentioned and i have no financial disclosures as we are aware retinitis pigmentosa is a genetic uh, degenerative retinal disorder with uh, no definitive uh, therapeutic cure as of present the uh, propounded possible therapy is going ahead uh, bifurcate into either uh, gene therapy which is uh, specific for the rp65 uh, mutation related disease and uh, more specifically the stem cell based uh, cellular replacement which could uh, either be embryonic uh, induced pluripotent stem cells or via the mesenchymal cells of these uh, the cells uh, which have had the maximum interest uh, in general recently are the induced uh, or the ips cells here in uh, uh, somatic cells which are mature are taken from a donor and are uh, exposed uh, to the yamanaka factors and uh, reprogrammed to form a stem cell and then uh, these cells uh, when exposed to other specific growth factors can be converted back to an end stage differentiation of these cells of our choice so in our uh, previous work uh, what we had done was uh, we took nude mice which are mice models uh, which are immunocompromised and therein the cells uh, which were created in our lab and converted into the rp cells were injected in the subcutaneous space in these animal models after having it, uh, injected them into the subcutaneous space uh, they were su subjected to histopathologic examination and immunohistochemical staining 16 weeks uh, down the line and uh, what we found were uh, that these rp cells derived from pure cultures of uh, ips in our labs neither proliferated abnormally nor induced any teratomas in the nude mice that means these human rp lab created cells were safe uh, in the body of an immunocompromised animal so with this background we went ahead to assess the safety and integration of uh, subretinal injection of these cells in an ex vivo animal model at 6 months this was uh, an ex vivo prospective preclinical animal study we included 16 eyes and the uh, animal model that was used was a blind royal college of uh, surgeon rat or the blind rcs rats the study was uh, conducted at the lv prasad i institute and the national center for laboratory animal sciences national institute of nutrition hyderabad india and was approved by the institute review committee of uh, both the institutes all animal handling was done in accordance with the arvo statement here in uh, is a photograph uh, showing the setup where uh, the uh, ketamine anesthetized uh, rat has been laid down with a specifically created speculum to hold and prop out uh, the eyeball and using a dissecting microscope uh, the cells were injected in the subretinal space this is a small video clip uh, showing how the subretinal injection uh, is done under the dissecting microscope uh, we have entered through the limbus using an mvr and an insert and uh, an incision is made into the retina once the incision is made about 0.2 million cells on a 39 gauge uh, needle flat tip needle on a hamilton syringe was used to inject these cells into the subretinal space so here you can see the tip below the vessels showing that it's in the subretinal space and a nice blob of uh, cells getting injected into the subretinal space here in uh, we see the uh, examination under anesthesia of uh, the same rat uh, around 5 to 6 months down the line and nice pigmented cells can be seen spread out in the subretinal space which uh, show the presence of the human rp cells at that timeline uh, in the follow up this is an immunohistochemical uh, section of uh, one of the sacrificed rats wherein you can nicely see the tract via which uh, these cells are injected from the vitreous cavity across the retina into the subretinal space and they are settling down on the uh, rp choroid layer immunohistochemical examination further showed us that uh, these cells not only settle but then they home in on the uh, uh, home in on the brooks membrane and uh, wherever they are homing in the corresponding area in the neuroretina shows preservation of the photoreceptors so this shows that there is some amount of rescue effect that occurs due to the transplantation of these cells more importantly immunohistochemical staining showed that these rp cells uh, were shining blue on the tapi stain showing uh, or uh, 
telling us that uh, these are viable retinal pigment epithelial cells. And on the H mito antigen, fluorescence was positive, telling us that these had human mitochondria. That means these were the same cells that were injected uh, into the subretinal space of the rat that were created in the laboratory. In conclusion, live pigmented RP cells survived in the subretinal space beyond three months of injection. There was no tumor formation noted till six months post injection. The RP injected cells protected the overlying photoreceptor layers from degeneration. And at six months, the injected cells expressed human specific mitochondria and RP specific markers demonstrating their viability. We also had certain addendum observations during our learning curve, which were that the injection site hemorrhage is a strict no-no in such uh, experiments. So if there is hemorrhage occurring there, the viable cells uh, undergo necrosis and that uh, animal uh, could get lost. Also, all pigmentation does not represent live cells unless immunohistochemically examined. Some of the pigment that you see grossly would just represent ghost cells, which are dead cells, but they still uh, sort of retain their pigment. So an immunohistochemical examination and cross-checking is uh, pretty important. Also, immunosuppression of the animal, because what we are injecting into the animal is a xeno tissue. So the immunosuppression with pre and post injection of oral cyclosporin is uh, very important. Dr. Dave, your time cyclosporin... is up. You finish up. Yeah. Fast. Yeah. In conclusion, this demonstrated that the efficiency of our cell protocol and purity and safety of RP cells for future in vivo applications in cell therapy for retinal degenerations. And unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 effect, we could not... Uh, step up the experiment and check for functional assessment, which would be done later along the year as the things open up. So these are my so, acknowledgements of my co-workers and uh, thank you for the kind attention. From which part of the body did you take cells? Human cells? We, we took uh, cells from the skin. Okay. And how? in how many cases you have done this? In how many rats? We have done, in, we have done this in 16 eyes. Okay. 16 yeah, rat Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yeah, good thank study. You.